Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Well, today we're going to take a look at this Pit Boss controller. Uh, this is Jeff's old Pit Boss controller. He said it was broken or something was wrong with it. I, I don't remember what he said. <laughs> he sent it to me about about uh, two months ago, so uh, I've, I've had it for a while. and. And he sent it to me just so I could get the faceplate measurements off here. He's going to be our first custom faceplate for the Muxall Pro. Yeah, this thing's about, let's see, let's see, what is this thing? It's about eight and a half inches wide. All right, by about, uh, about two and a half inches. So then it's got a little taper right here. So I'll have to I'll have to take some measurements and and make a custom faceplate for it. As you can see, it kind of snaps in, and I'll show that to you here. Uh, I don't know if it'll be this video or another video, but for this video, I just wanted to take a look at this Pit Boss controller in case you'd never seen one. I'll try to keep the reflections off. It's it's got a very shiny front on here. Uh, this looks like the power button Prime. I'm guessing Prime is if you hold the button in. It just runs the auger, so like if you're changing pellets out or you run out of pellets, you refill the hopper and you wanna, you don't want it to uh, flame out trying to start it up. Uh, so I'm guessing it's got some kind of flame out detection on there. That's why it needs a prime button. Here's the P settings. I'm sure all the trigger folks know what that is. And of course your, uh, your thermostat. Or I guess I should call it the control knob because it's got off smoke. All the way up to uh, 475 or high. Yeah, this thing been rode hard and put up wet. You can see the, <laughs> the, the protective plastic cover is kind of coming off of it. And uh, you can see grease running down it. So, uh, but this is nice. These are these are for the meat probes, I'm guessing. And and it's got these little plugs for it. And, and I kind of looked at for something like that for the uh, Muxall Pro. I don't know where they got these from, but I... I couldn't find them at any of my suppliers. So you just have to cover them in. I don't know how much people use them. I they are kind of nice. It is that's a nice nice touch. Nice nice attention to detail. Yeah, that's a that's that's what the faceplate looks like. So yeah, let's take a look at the back. Well I'll use this other camera here. Uh, right right there. <laughs> To, so we can take a better look at the electronics, but just a quick overview. This looks like it's probably for the chamber probe. A little two-wire, just says P3, I don't know what that means. Uh, plug 3, maybe. And then uh, everyone's familiar with the, uh, the Traeger-style wiring harness. And you got black, which I'm guessing, black and white, which is power in. Purple, and then yellow, and red. I don't remember a yellow in the Traeger. And uh, I'm guessing they're all pretty much the same as the as the trigger. I was I'm looking here to see if they're actually labeled and they're not. So and there's no labels on them. So, but it's not that important. It's it's going to be pretty much the same. You're going to have igniter, fan, auger, and power in. Uh, no matter which the colors are. I'm, I'm guessing the black is definitely power in. And here's your triax up here. And uh, then we've got some high voltage caps and. We've got some looks like resistors that are in heat shrink. Not sure what they're doing. Uh, maybe protect them from dirt. Well, now they've got a hole in it, so yeah, I don't know. That's that's interesting. Uh, speaking of dirt, this it's interesting that, and we'll look at it better in the microscope. But it looks like it's conformally coated. It looks like the conformal coating stops right here for some reason, or maybe it's just heavier right here. I I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. We'll look at it better under the scope. And here's the fuse and transformer. There's this guy down here. Oh, well, we'll have to look at it under the scope. So we got one, two, three triax, and oh, uh, this might be a like a 7805, like a power converter, DC to DC converter. And there's probably oh, here's some diodes down here. That's probably going to be your full wave rectifier. And these look like optocouplers. And then here's the plugs for the meat probes. Looks like it only supports a two-wire meat probe. So uh, no, no fancy three wires RTD for this guy, huh? And uh, then there's a fuse and a holder strapped down with a tie strap. 
Okay, well, let's take a better look at this, all right? So, I'm, I've got you uh, in the microscope camera now. We'll just start from the left of the board and work our way to the right. Okay, we got our UL ratings there. It looks like we got a date code of 8-24-2017 for the PCB. Here's the back part where the selector switch is. Nothing special there. And uh, right here, this U2 guy, that is... It's a microchip uh, 6061 op-amp, okay, uh, rail to rail, and uh, it has a date code of uh, 1802, so I'm guessing it's uh, probably 2018. Well, I was going to say those are to, uh, to boost the signals coming from the, the inputs. I was looking at it, and so here's the probe inputs here, all right, and... That op amp's way up here. I mean, it it could be used on this guy right here, and it it might be, but yeah, I I didn't bother trying to <laughs> reverse engineer this thing. I'm not very interested in it, other than what parts are in it. Let's continue on. We'll look at the micro here in a sec. So here's a crystal oscillator for the micro. Here's the micro. It's a it's a Esoft. I'm sorry, Eastsoft HR7P. I googled that thing and tried, you know, getting some data on it, and, and all I got was a bunch of chatter online about some eight cent micro, and and I'm almost positive this thing costs more than eight cents, and I didn't want to try digging it up. Like I said, I don't really care. It's just a a regular you know microprocessor. Back to that op amp, I don't see, and like I said, I didn't really try reverse engineering this thing. And he, it might be used for this guy here, but like I said, all the all the probe inputs are down here. So unless they're running underneath the board, but all these these pins right here, these these through hole pins, are coming down and going into the micro. You got another set down here. I'm guessing all these pins are to drive the LCD, because because I don't I don't know if this has got a you know any kind of um you know, I squared C functionality. In fact, I don't see another chip around here unless it's on the board. I'm not gonna pull this thing apart, it's not mine, so I don't think Jeff would appreciate it to start tearing his board apart. Yeah, it looks like we got a bunch of pull-up resistors. Oh, these are probably not pull-ups, these are probably voltage dividers. And they're probably going into these transistors right here, which is turning on and off these, these optocouplers right here. We could probably follow, yeah, so you can see this one goes here, that one runs up, probably goes up there. And one of the things I was looking at, if you take a look at these traces, this is kind of funny. Look at the, look at the curved lines for the traces. It's almost like they're, well, this guy up here has kind of got an angle, but they, they got this uh, isolation gap right here, uh, isolating the high voltage from the low voltage here. But yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know if these are if they're trying to impedance match these guys or or what. Well, no, because look at here's here's more of them right here. That is strange. I, you don't see a lot of curved <laughs> curved traces. Usually, you know, they kind of are at forty five degree angles. At least mine are. But uh, yeah, that's 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 interesting. The way all this stuff is with these curved lines. I mean, it almost looks like. They're trying to impedance match these guys, but I don't know. Well, it's good to know it passed quality control. That's good. Yeah, so these optocouplers right here are controlling the turning on and off these these triacs up here. Oh, by the way, the optocouplers, I kind of looked them up. They're a, they're a light on MOC3068. And they've got conformal coating all over them. That's why they're so shiny like that. And that's, you know, to protect the, uh, the electronics. Uh, from dirt and moisture and that sort of thing. It's got a couple uh, electrolytic caps. Uh, see if you can see them. 470 mic cap. Anyway, I, I looked. I I was able to get a name off the cap, and I'd never heard of them. They're they're chin bin caps. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe you can see it on, over here. There you go. Chin bin. Yeah, I'd never heard of them. Uh, at least they're 105 caps. Let's see what else we got here. So we've got. Here's our uh, triax. These are BTA 12s. Uh, I'm assuming they're real ST micro triax. And uh, here's those strange. It, it says that they're resistors. I, I don't know if these 
I don't, I don't know why they're in this heat shrink here. And I, I, if this was mine, I'd take a knife and cut it off and, and look at it, but it's not mine, so I don't want to do that. Uh, I told Jeff I'd send it back to him, and I'm sure he doesn't want it damaged uh, when it's returned. I've got some silicone rubber here, electronics grade silicone rubber. I forget what the brand name of this, or what the nickname of this stuff is, but uh, anyway, it's just regular silicone rubber made for electronics. That's why it looks like they're using it for as strain relief. The wires there, that's, that's okay. I, I've got it on all the wires. I, I guess that I guess that works pretty good as a strain relief. I never thought about that. And uh, let's see what else we got. But yeah, they're ST Micro BTA12 uh, Triax. I, I got the number through the through the microscope. Let's see, we've got the, the fuse and fuse holder there. And we've got a a transformer, 120 volt, there it is, 100, 120 volt to uh, 7.5 volt AC from, gosh, I can't hardly read that, Donggun City Yingju Electronics. And I, I, it's got a UL rating or UL listing number on it. That's good. Um, oh, there's this down here. I Let's see, can we read that? I'm going to look through the microscope here and see if I can read it. Yeah, so we got clock, data... Something, something, VPP. Oh, VCC, VPP. I can't read the other one. Data, clock. I guess that's a debug port. And uh, let's see, is it is it going over to the micro? I don't know. It drops down. Like I said, I don't want to pull this board out. It, it, it actually might be double. They might have more components on the other side, but... It's not going to be very interesting. Oh, it does have uh, input protection. Right. Right. Yeah, it's got a little mauve right. Uh, where is it? Right here. It's a little mauve. I, I couldn't get any numbers off of it. And it's got uh, this big old 0 0.1 mic X2 rated safety cap. It's a Mex Tenta. There, I, I'm not familiar with them. Hey, I'm, I'm guessing the other side, you know, I'm guessing the LCD is probably just soldered or mounted mounted to the other side. And, oh, one other thing I thought I would mention. This is kind of nice. I uh, It's got these little isolation gaps right here for the power coming in. So here's the mob. Here's that safety cap we we're looking at. And it's got these isolation gaps in there. That's kind of nice. It's got a little isolation gap around this screw right there, which... Is kind of interesting, I guess. It's, it's got another one around this screw right here. I mean, this thing is plastic. I don't know. Maybe there's a maybe it's flood filled on the other side. Here's a little fiducial, so they can uh, for the re, for the pick and place machine. Although, gosh, all these I'm surprised they all these parts are through hole right here. Uh, I know my caps are through hole too, but that's because I have got those monster military grade uh, safety caps on there, and uh, I, I'm. I surface mount my my triax and uh, yeah even their optocouplers are oops even their optocouplers here are are through hole I I'm surprised they even bothered maybe maybe it's cheaper to have have them pick and place this board out and because a lot of these parts are Chinese but the uh, the triax are you uh, I don't know this is a through hole this this transformer right there is a through hole device uh, yeah I don't know I don't know I don't know the method to their madness. Me personally, I, I, you know, if I'm going to have a house, re, uh, do a pick and place and reflow it, I want them to do it all. But yeah, they have to, they have to hand solder in all these pins for the LCD. Yeah, all these caps right here and the tracks. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It, it looks, other than the crystal oscillator, it looks almost just like the, the trigger controller, really. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm even using the BTA 12s. Those are pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. That's that's weird. It, I'm guessing it says R, so I'm guessing they're resistors. I don't know why they're in the heat shrink unless they're afraid they're <laughs> someone's going to electrocute themselves with it. One of the things I noticed is I don't know what the other side looks like, but I would have thought they could have made this board a tad bit smaller. It looks. I mean, this thing is is huge. They've got all kinds of real estate on this guy. I mean, yeah, look at this guy. It's it's eight and a half inches, nine inches long, and <laughs> what, uh, two 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 and a quarter, two and a half inches wide. And that thing is monster. That's a, that's a big PCB, but it is what it is. So yeah, very nice. Well, thank you, Jeff, for sending that in.
That's uh, we had got a good good look at this guy. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal, or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.